In this lecture, we are going to discuss the phalanges. Phalanges are basically the bones of the fingers and the thumb. There are 14 phalanges in one hand. So it means that both hand has basically 28 bones or you can say phalanges. So in each finger, you will see the three phalanges. But in the thumb, you will see the only two phalanges. Okay. So if you see here, first of all, this one, these are the bones that are actually called the carpal bones that actually make our wrist. These are the carpal bones. Okay. Next, you will see the metacarpal, metacarpal bones that actually make our palm. And after that, you will see the fingers, four fingers and one thumb. In four fingers, you will see the three phalanges. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Three phalanges in each of them. But on the thumb, you will see the one and the two phalanges. Okay, that's the most important. So, we will further categorize phalanges on the presence of the location. Those phal phalanges that are actually present adjacent to the metacarpal bones that actually make our palm is called the proximal phalanges. So, basically, these blacks are the proximal phalanges. Okay. Next, you will see the middle phalanges. Okay. In each finger, you will see the presence of the middle phalanges, M4, middle. But in the thumb, there is no middle phalanges. Okay, that's the most important thing. And last, you will see the distal, okay, that is actually far from the metacarpal, that is distal phalanges. Okay, thumb also has distal Failings. Okay. So proximal failings. Next is the middle. And last is the distal failings. But thumb has no middle failings in that case. That is the important thing which you have to remember. And the total bones that are actually present in the four fingers and the thumb will be 14 in one hand. And in both hand you will see the 28 bones. Okay. So each Failings has three components. One is the base, then is the shaft, and last is the head. Three components actually present in all of that. In the proximal, in the middle, and the, in the distal failings. All these phalanges has three components. Okay. If we discuss the properties of each failings, so as we have discussed that the phalanges Phalanges are basically 40 in number. If we discuss one hand, okay. And we will further categorize the phalanges into the three. On the basis of the location of the phalanges. First is the proximal. Proximal phalanges. Second is the middle. And third is the distal okay here are basically the three category of the proximal middle and the distal so basically there are one two three four five five proximal uh, phalanges actually present in one hand so number of the proximal phalanges will be the five if we discuss the middle so in the middle you will see the only four middle phalanges actually present in them one is missing in the thumb. So basically, four phalanges actually present in the fingers. Okay. And distal, you will see the five distal phalanges. Okay. Next, if we look at the proximal. So as we have discussed, we further categorize the phalanges on the basis of its parts. So basically, proximal phalanx has three components. That's the most important thing. First is the base second is the head and last is the shaft region okay 
Similarly, middle phalanges has again three component: base, head, and the shaft. Distal phalanx has again three component: that is the base, head, and the shaft. So that's the most important thing. It means that proximal has three component. Middle has three component base, shaft and the head and distal has again three component base, shaft and the head. So each phalanx has three component. If we discuss the first component base of the proximal phalanx, that's the most important thing. So base of the proximal phalanx is actually concave facing shape. Okay, here are basically the proximal phalanx. So base of the proximal, here is basically the base. Base of the proximal phalanx is actually concave facing. That actually articulates with the metacarpal bones. That's the most important thing. The base of the proximal phalanx is actually concave oval facing shape. Concave like structure, this one. Here is the concave structure. And the metacarpal bones actually, if I write it with the blue color, so the metacarpal bones actually articulate with them. Okay. Here is the cave structure of the base of the proximal phalanx that articulate with the metacarpal bones. That's the most important thing. Okay. Next is the head of the proximal. So head of the, here is the head. Next is the head of the proximal phalanx. So head of the proximal phalanx is actually pulley shape, trochlear shape that actually articulate with the middle phalanx. Okay. So basically head of the, so head is actually pulley shape. Okay. That's the most important thing. Just like that pulley shape that articulate with the middle phalanx. Okay, next is the shaft. Shaft properties is common in all of them. So we will discuss it later. Next is the middle phalanx. So middle phalanx, base of the middle phalanx is actually, if I see, here is the middle phalanx. So base of the middle phalanx has two concave facet. Okay, that's the most important thing. It has two concave facet structure just like that two cave like structure okay in which you will see the proximal phalanx will articulate that's the most important thing which you have to remember so two base of the middle phalanx is actually concave facet having concave facet that's the most important thing that will articulate with the proximal phalanx next is the head so head is again pulley shape that is common in all of them. Pulley shaped head. Okay. Next is the base of the distal. So base of the distal phalanx again is actually the two concave facet shape. Two concave facet shape. Two cave like structure. That will articulate with the previous middle phalanx. Okay. Next is the head. So head of the distal phalanx is very much important because the head of the distal phalanx is non-articular. So at that side, there is no attachment of any bone. That is our fingertips. Okay. So that's the most important thing. It is actually non-articular. Articular. There is no attachment of the bone at that side. Okay. An important thing which you have to remember at the interior side of the distal phalanx that actually make our fingertips. Okay, if I write it here, here is the okay. If I zoom the distal phalanx, okay, at the anterior side, at the interior side of the distal phalanx, you will see the horse shoe shape tuberosity. Here is the horse shoe like structure and that is actually the cubi 
porosity at the anterior side anterior side of our finger here is the fingertips and at that side you will see the presence of the horse shoe shaped tuberosity that actually support our finger pulp that's the most important thing which you have to remember about the distal fillings okay if we discuss the shaft middle region of each phalanges that is commonly known at the dorsal side you will see the convex structure okay that is the common in all of them here is basically the different shaft region in the shaft of all phalanges you will see at the dorsal side you will see the convex shape and at the palmar side you will see the flat or you can say concave shape that's the most important thing at the dorsal side of the hand you will see the convex shape phalanges little bit and at the palmar side you will see the flat or little bit concave shape phalanges that is common in them so basically what what we have learned today different types of the phalanges proximal middle and the distal and each proximal middle and the distal phalanges has three component base head and the shaft okay that is all about the phalanges if you still have any question you may ask in the comment section thank you so much